Hello, my name is Greg Story. I'm the president of Dale Carnegie Training here in Japan. Public speaking is one of those critical skills we all need in life, but many of us fail to get even off the first stepping stone to success in becoming a public speaker because we are so scared of the process and we fear failure and we fear ridicule and we worry about things that might go wrong during our speech and humiliate ourselves in front of people and have people laugh at us during the middle of our presentation. It doesn't have to be like that though, because with training, we can overcome all those issues and we can be properly prepared. There are many things in life you wouldn't think about doing unless you were properly trained and prepared. So why would public speaking not be one of those and particularly something where you are in front of a, an audience and you are on stage and you are the centerpiece and all the eyes and all the attention and all the lights are on you this you would think would be a fairly good time to be well and truly tuned up ready to go prepared and well trained for the activity so what could we do well in the preparation we could first of all deal with the fear factor and it is true fear is a natural process it's a chemical reaction the adrenaline in the body starts to pump as we get nervous and therefore we start to feel that uncomfortable feeling in the, in the stomach and pulse starts to beat and we start to start to perspire feeling a bit, bit hot. Very natural reaction because this is a stressful and pressure situation. What we need to do though is learn how to deal with that fear. So there are some things we can do with some deep breathing, trying to keep our pulse rate low or we might find the, like the so-called green room or an area out of sight of the audience where we can do some very vigorous walking, try and burn off some of that nervous energy to sort of calm ourselves down a little bit. We can think about the fact that we're prepared for this, we can be confident and we've got to also remember only we know what's in that presentation. So if we go a little bit off track or we miss a bit or we get the order wrong, unless we tell the audience that, we're the only ones who know that. So the fear of failing is only what's obvious. And if you're shaking and your voice is quivering, that's obvious. If we can get around those things through practice and rehearsal and repetition before we get on stage or before we get in front of the group, then all that goes away. The other thing is, who's our audience? Now, there are expert audiences, mixed audiences of experts and non-experts and then non-experts. And who is actually going to be there? We need to find that out before we even start thinking about the preparation. So the organizers, or if we know ourselves, what's the gender mix? What's the age bracket? What's the experience mix? Now, are they real experts? Are they not experts? What level do I need to pitch this talk at so that I will get through to my audience? I won't be talking over their head, or I won't be insulting them by going too low. I'll be right on target, or I need a mixture because I have different groups in the audience. These are some of the things we need to look at. And part of our audience research is when we actually get to the venue, come early. Well, you should come early anyway to set up just in case there's some equipment failure or there's some problem you need to get sorted out before you start. Never turn up in a rush. That's the first rule. Get there early. And after you've set up, then as the audience members come in, walk over and introduce yourself. Hi, my name's Greg Story. I'm going to be your speaker today. What's your interest in coming and what do you do? Have a little conversation with a few people. Start to understand a little bit about them their motivations and have that conversation. Then when we get to start the talk, we can start reaching out to those people. You know, I was talking to Mary at the beginning today before we got over, got going, and she mentioned something very interesting that I hadn't thought about before. Now we're connecting with one of them, the audience members. So it's no longer us and them, we're inside that group too. And we use words like we, not you which is a separator. So small things like this, including the audience, getting them to uh, raise their hands uh, in answer to a question so there's some physical involvement, not too much though, don't go crazy on that, uh, is also very, very helpful. Another thing we need to take careful note of is what is the point of this talk? What is our purpose? Are we here to convince our audience of some idea? action, plan, suggestion, proposal? Are we here to motivate them to take action on something? Or are we here to provide information, get some new data in front of them, some uh, latest research findings? Is it an inform 
presentation? Or are we here just to entertain them? We're the after dinner speaker. We're going to tell some stories. We're going to tell people some interesting things, get them laughing, going to have a good time. Depending on what our purpose is, that will determine the structure we have. So we know who the audience is going to be. What are we trying to achieve with that audience? Let's structure that in a way that will be most effective with that audience. Now, how are we going to start? This is very critical because that audience, they are already full in their heads with stuff. It's a busy day. They've got things coming up. They've got lots of stuff on their mind. We are an interruption to their thought processes and day. And we're competing with a lot of distractions. They've got their mobile phones with them. They can escape in a second. So how are we going to stop them being distracted and grab their attention to listen to us? We want their attention to listen to us. So our opening has got to break through all that clutter. Then as we get into the structure, you know, where are we going with this? Uh, what's the main points we want to talk about? We've got a limited amount of time. How many points do we think we can get through? What's the evidence to back up the points we're going to refer to? And then we're going to get to the close. How are we going to finish it up? Now, the opening is a first impression for us as a speaker. The close is a final impression for the speaker. And we don't want to miss those two key points because that's what people remember. First impression, last impression. So the close is very important. Plus, there's actually two closes. There's the first close after we finish our major part of the speech. Then we go, right, question time. Who has the first question? Go into Q&A. Then at the end of Q&A, we close again because we want to wrap it up according to the particular angle we want to place on the point of discussion today. We want to reinforce our key message to the audience and we want that to be the final impression, not some random question that came out of the audience was completely off target and more tangential to the whole discussion. No, we need to control that final impression. So our visuals are very important. If we're using slides, there are some very basic rules around slides. And the major problems people get into trouble with the slides are too much information on one slide. Zen-like approach, bare, easy, in two seconds. Two seconds, they have to get what's on that slide. If they can't get it in two seconds, then change it. If you've got masses of data, don't put that up. You might have a wall of numbers which nobody can read, and you've all heard this. I know you can't read this, but, well, if we can't read it, why on earth is that on the screen? You can have a wall of numbers like wallpaper and pull out one number, one large number, font number, and talk about that one number and what it means. Or if you're showing graphs with trend lines, we'll just talk about the trend. You don't have to have you know, massive detail on what the exact numbers are. You see people have got this point in time, has got this number and this number. And don't need that. You just need to show the audience looks at the trend. They understand where we're going with it. So let's not have too many colors. Oh, Japan, Japan, please, please. Don't put five colors or more on a slide. Oh, I just can't believe it sometimes or have colors and fonts that you can hardly read the font because the background color and the font color are so similar. They sort of disappear. They're, they're so opaque, can't even understand it. So many simple things that uh, people get wrong, which they don't need to get wrong. So let's make our visuals very clear, easy to understand. They have lots of them. Don't have to have all the graphs and diagrams on one slide. One diagram, one slide, one graph, one slide. Big size, good rule for everyone because a slide is basically cost you nothing. <laughs> it's not like the old days. We had to go and provide actual uh, slides in a slide projector or uh, with an OHP making the slides on an OHP. It's not, today it's free. Okay, so let's not kill our audience with too much detail on the slide. And don't make the visuals the key point. We have to be the key point. We want the audience looking at us, not at the screen. So make ourselves the key point and the slides are purely a backup to us. Q&A. Now, there's an important point I mentioned before. Now, generally speaking, when we're doing our talk, we're in total control. Right? We've written it. We've been given the time. We're up on the podium. We've got the mic. We're in charge. However, when we get to Q&A, you know, who's the first question? Now, it's a street fight. It's a street fight. Anybody can ask anything or make any statement or say anything they like, and we cannot control it. And this is where you see a lot of presenters. They do a pretty good job. They're in control, they've got their materials, they've, you know, they know what they're talking about. Then they go to Q&A and it's a disaster. 
and they don't know how to answer the questions. They start to get very nervous and they start stumbling and mumbling and bumbling and the, suddenly their credibility just goes kapluck. Why would you want that? Q&A, there's techniques for Q&A. How to deal with those really curly questions. How to take a question and disable that question. How to nullify the power of the question. Sometimes those questions, they're not questions. They're guided missiles from someone trying to make us look bad. And this happens a lot in big companies. Someone from another division, so they're going to show us up, they're going to one-up us, they're going to get the elbows out because they want to get to the top ahead of us. And they use the question time, question opportunity as a way of trying to make us look bad. So knowing how to handle those questions, very important. And rehearsal, rehearsal, rehearsal. Do not make the time that you step up to that podium, the first time that you've done this presentation. And it happens, busy people. Maybe someone else even prepared the slides, you haven't even seen them before. And you get up there and you're really unprepared and it looks like you're unprepared. Credibility, kaplunk again. So you've worked out what you're going to say, you've done all the preparation, now you go and rehearse and get the cadence right and get the timing right and get the pauses right and hit those key words that you want to really emphasize for your audience and make sure that even in practice there's nobody there. You're looking at all six sectors of your room, you know, the people in the front, the people in the back, people on the right, people on the left, people in the center. You've got those six pockets that you're looking at to make sure that you're covering everyone off. And this way, even though there's no one there, you're getting in the habit of being inclusive with the whole audience, draw them into you. Now, now wouldn't it be great if we could learn all these things and save ourselves the embarrassment, the stop the train wreck, you know, maintain our credibility. In fact, let's improve our credibility by being capable as a presenter. Well, there's a perfect answer to this. We have a program, it's called Successful Public Speaking. It's a one day program, we do it in house, we do it in public courses, we do it in Japanese, we do it in English. Very, very flexible, very, very easy. And we go through five modules in this course, it deals with all the things I've talked about in this video. The details are here in the video. If you'd like to know more about that, check it out. This could be something that will, well, it'll save you a lot of wear and tear. It'll save you a lot of time. It'll build your career and your business. And boy, you'll be so happy you got the training because unlike everybody else who's terrified to get up in front of people, you will get up, you will look confident, you will be confident, you will be capable, you will be believable, and people will remember you in a positive note. Wouldn't that be great? Do the course and that's what's going to happen.